This video is designed to help you start a sewing business. At the end of the video, you'll find a valuable gift. It's a sewing business plan that you can download and will lay down for you, step by step, everything you need to know to start a successful sewing business of your own. If you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Once you have made your goods or decided what to sell, you will need a website, Facebook store, or Etsy store to sell your goods on. Having your own website is probably the hardest when you are just starting out, but there are lots of website templates for beginners to try. Try and find a marketplace that already has lots of traffic and educate yourself on all the nuances of the platform. Don't forget to check out your local markets and craft fairs as well. Many up and coming designers have got their start in markets. It is great for getting customer feedback and testing new products, as well as selling ready to wear collections. Here are a few extra considerations when starting a sewing business that you may not have thought about. Distractions. The best and worst part of a home sewing business is working around your kids and family. The best because you don't have to travel each day and be away from your family, and the worst because distractions make it hard for you to work. Set up a dedicated sewing space and try and have your family respect your work time. Just try and get a system in place from the beginning, as it is harder to make changes later on. Health and sewing. Sewing for long periods can be hard on your body. If you are going to be sewing for long periods of time, always make sure you have good posture. Crafters and sewers have notoriously bad backs and poor posture. Try some yoga poses for improving posture, and take frequent breaks to stretch. Sew efficiently. You will need to be able to sew at a reasonable speed. There are lots of tools and gadgets to make your sewing faster and with frequent sewing, you will naturally get faster over time. Try and sew in batches for maximum efficiency. Charge what you are worth. This is an important topic. If you are researching how to start a sewing business then you are doing it for a reason. You are doing this to earn some extra money, so make sure you pay attention to your costs. Pricing, setting prices is about a balance between being competitive and not undervaluing your time and talents. In setting prices, use this formula, item price equals materials plus time plus overheads plus tax plus profit. Materials, cost all your fabrics, thread, labels and any consumables you use. Don't forget the small things like buttons and zippers as they can add up. Time. When setting your prices, don't forget to cost your time. Work how long it takes to sew your items, and then the cost of your time per hour. Choose easy styles that don't take too long to sew, and always look for shortcuts that don't sacrifice quality. Overheads. There are always running costs involved in having a business. These include electricity, internet, computers, sales listing fees, and even wear and tear on your machines. Tax. This is just part of any business. Take it into consideration for each item, so you don't have a big unexpected bill at the end. Always consult an expert when it comes to tax. Profit, you may just be happy to get an hourly rate for your sewing, but ideally healthy businesses make a profit too. When you are starting out, you may charge less than later, when you are established. As you can see, things quickly add up. This dress may not be profitable as is. You need to make sure you stock up on fabric when it is on sale and get your sewing time way down. One last word on pricing, don't compare your prices to ready-to-wear items at your local discount or department store. You are not competing with them. You are making a one-off or small run of a unique, handcrafted item. The value that what you do is important. You are not producing off-the-rack items and can't charge the same prices as clothing mass-produced in factories. Set and stick to your terms. Create a set of terms of sale for yourself and make sure all customers have read this. Sewing from home is a great way to make some extra money, but always protect yourself and make sure you are paid for your hard work. Deposits, I'd advise always getting a deposit before you start, so you know your customers are committed to the work you are about to do. The deposit should at least cover the cost of all the materials. That way, if you are stuck with an item you have only lost your time, and are not out of pocket for materials. Time frames, include time frames for pickup and consequences for non-pickups. Rules. Many countries have specific sales rules, so educate yourself on your local laws. The next part of the video is not specific to a sewing business. Nevertheless, this knowledge is essential for success in the sewing business, as well as in any other business. Ignore it at your own peril. Operating a successful sewing business will depend on the following four conventions. 1. A practical plan, with a solid foundation. 2. Dedication and willingness to sacrifice to reach your goal. 3. Technical skills. 4. 
basic knowledge of management, finance, record keeping and market analysis. As a new owner, you will need to master these skills and techniques if your business is to be successful. Finding a niche. Small businesses range in size from a manufacturer with many employees and millions of dollars in equipment to the lone window washer with a bucket and a sponge. Obviously, the knowledge and skills required for these two extremes are far apart, but for success they have one thing in common. Each has found a business niche and is filling it. The most critical problems you will face in your early planning will be to find your niche and determine the feasibility of your idea. Get into the right business at the right time is very good advice, but following that advice may be difficult. Many entrepreneurs plunge into a business venture so blinded by the dream that they fail to thoroughly evaluate its potential. Is your business idea feasible? Before you invest time, effort, and money, the following exercise will help you separate sound ideas from those bearing a high potential for failure. Identify and briefly describe the business you plan to start. Identify the product or service you plan to sell. Answering yes to any of the following three questions means you are on the right track. A negative answer to all of them means the road ahead could be rough. 1. Does your product or service satisfy an unfilled need? 2. Will your product or service serve an existing market in which demand exceeds supply? 3. Will your product or service be competitive, based on its quality, selection, price, or location? Market Analysis For a small business to be successful, the owner must know the market. To learn the market, you must analyze it, a process that takes time and effort. You don't have to be a trained statistician to analyze the marketplace, nor does the analysis have to be costly. Analyzing the market is a way to gather facts about potential customers and to determine the demand for your product or service. The more information you gather, the greater your chances of capturing a segment of the market. Know the market before investing your time and money in any business venture. The following questions will help you collect the information necessary to analyze your market and determine if your product or service will sell. This brief exercise will give you a good idea of the kind of market planning you need to do. An answer of no to any of the questions indicates a weakness in your plan. So do your research until you can answer each question with a yes. 1. Do you know who your customers will be? 2. Do you understand their needs and desires? 3. Do you know where they live? 4. Will you be offering the kind of products or services that they will buy? 5. Will your prices be competitive in quality and value? 6. Will your promotional program be effective? 7. Do you understand how your business compares with your competitors? 8. Will your business be conveniently located for the people you plan to serve? 9. Will there be adequate parking facilities for the people you plan to serve? Planning your startup. The following questions are grouped according to function. They are designed to help you prepare for opening day. Merchandise. Have you decided what items you will sell or produce, or what services you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan? based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers? Business Records Are you prepared to maintain complete records, of sales, income and expenses, accounts payable, and receivables? Have you determined how to handle payroll records, tax reports, and payments? Do you know what financial reports, should be prepared, and how to prepare them. Finances. A large number of small businesses, fail each year. There are a number of reasons for these failures, but one of the main reasons is insufficient funds. Too many entrepreneurs, try to start and operate a business, without sufficient capital, money. To avoid this dilemma, you can review your situation by analyzing the following three questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much money will you need to start your business? 3. How much money will you need to stay in business? In order to answer the second question, how much money will you need to start your business? You need to prepare an estimate of all your startup costs. Here is a list of items you may need to take into account. Note that this list is for a retail business. Items will vary for service, construction, manufacturing or online firms. Decorating and remodeling, fixtures and equipment, installing fixtures and equipment, services and supplies, beginning inventory cost, legal, professional fees, licenses and permits, 
telephone utility deposits, insurance, signs, advertising for opening, unanticipated expenses. Now, the answer to the third question, how much money will you need to stay in business? Must be divided into two parts, immediate costs, and future costs. From the moment the door to your new business opens, a certain amount of income may come in. However, this income should not be projected in your operating expenses. You will need enough money available to cover costs for at least the first three months of operation. The following list will help you project your operating expenses on a monthly basis. Typical expenses for one month may include your living costs, employee wages, rent, advertising, supplies, utilities, insurance, taxes, maintenance, delivery, transportation, miscellaneous. Now sum up the total estimated monthly expenses and multiply it by three. This is the amount of cash you will need to cover operating expenses for three months. Deposit this amount in a savings account before opening your business. Use it only for those purposes listed in the above list because this money will ensure that you will be able to continue in business during the crucial early stages. By adding the total startup costs to the total expenses for three months, you can learn what the estimated costs will be to start and operate your business for three months. By subtracting the totals of the lists from the cash available, you can determine the amount of additional financing you may need, if any. Now you will need to estimate your operating expenses for the first year after startup. The first step in determining your annual expenses is to estimate your sales volume, month by month. Next, determine the cost of sales. You may want to use a spreadsheet to do this. After startup, the primary source of revenue in your business will be from sales, but your sales will vary from month to month because of seasonal patterns and other factors. It is important to determine if your monthly sales will produce enough income to pay each month's bills. An estimated cash flow projection will show if the monthly cash balance is going to be subject to such factors as the following, failure to recognize seasonal trends, excessive cash taken from the business for living expenses, too rapid expansion, and slow collection of accounts if credit is extended to customers. Conclusion If you have carefully answered all the questions in this video, you have seriously thought about your goal. However, there may be some things you may feel you need to know more about. Owning and running a sewing business is a continuous learning process. Research your idea and do as much as you can yourself, but don't hesitate to seek help from people who can tell you what you need to know. As we conclude this video, it's time you get your free sewing business plan gift. Go to the description below this video to get it now. It is completely free, no strings attached. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please, like, and hit the subscribe button, for more videos like this.